Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. As you can tell right now, I have something different in store for you. And over the next few weeks, I plan on making a uh, dedicated ERJ-170-175 pilot series for anyone who may be curious on how we uh, properly operate this aircraft. We'll be using uh, Field Air's ERJ-175 for Prepare 3D version 4, but I know it's also available for version 5 as well, so feel free to use that one. However, I do know that X-Plane also makes a uh, ERJ-175, and uh, it's, I think it's modeled by X-Craft, so feel free to follow along and use them as well, as it uh, should be the same. Okay, so throughout these videos, uh, we'll be going on depth on what it takes to fly this aircraft from arriving to a, a cold and dark airplane, setting it up, taxiing, taking off, climb, cruise, descent planning, arrival, and then parking and shutting it down. I know it sounds like a lot, but throughout the series, we'll break it down and make it manageable for us all. Uh, we'll make sure to cover it all from crew briefings, checklists, captain and first officer flows, and then uh, person flying and person monitoring flows in uh, certain situations as well. So with that all said, welcome to episode one. In this episode, we'll be covering some basic definitions here in the beginning and some terms and checklists. And then uh, we'll be arriving to a cold and dark airplane now that's been sitting uh, for a few hours at the airport. And then our goal is to complete its safety and pre-flight checks and then just power it up. And boom, that's episode one. Uh, but now for the info today is uh, we'll be arriving uh, to Sh Chicago O'Hare today and operating as uh, Envoy 4117 uh, to George Bush Intercontinental Airport out in Houston. Uh, our plane is currently parked in the Lima Gates, Lima 20, and uh, it's been waiting for us now for the past few hours. But uh, before we jump into the flight deck here and start doing this all, let's quickly go over some... Uh, acronyms here and some basic definitions that you'll probably see pop up here in the video series and there's not very many so the first one being is uh, PF stands for person flying and as you can imagine it's pretty self-explanatory and their job is to just slowly fly the airplane next one being uh, PM which stands for person monitoring and their responsibility is to just handle the radio communications and monitor the aircraft uh, when the uh, person flying is flying and just make sure it's all going smoothly. And then the last one being flows and that's just really a method that the captain and the first officer uses uh, just to make sure that the aircraft is properly set up uh, before completing any checklist. So those were the only three that I wanted to get by right now. Now that we've completed that, let's go ahead and jump down to the flight deck here and complete the uh, interior flight deck inspection. All right, so now that we've arrived in the airplane today, we want to complete our flight deck inspection. And we do this because we haven't been on board this plane yet today, and we want to make sure that all of the normal equipment, the emergency equipment, the required manuals, the checklists, and the documentation are all on board and up to date on this plane today. And then we also want to make sure that there's nothing that doesn't belong on the plane. So the captain will normally accomplish this when we first arrive on the plane, and uh, everyone, don't forget, it's still a sim, so if it's not properly modeled, we're just going to move on and say that it is, as I'm just showing you in general what we should be looking for. So starting over here at the doorway, we're going to be looking at the fire extinguisher and make sure that its pressure is in the green with its pin still installed. We have a crash axe that's been stowed, and then our personal breathing equipment, we want to make sure that its tamper evidence seal is not broken. Looking at the captain's side now, there's a flashlight down here that we want to confirm that its LED light is red and steady, which means it's fully charged. We have a life vest and heat resistant gloves in our back seat pocket here. And then all of our circuit breakers have been closed or collared. We want to confirm back by the jump seater then uh, that our headset is on board there as this aircraft has three headsets. Uh, in case you don't bring your own, they're supplied. And then we want to check all of our compartments here to make sure that nothing funny is in there. Uh, the FAA didn't come in and try and, or TSA didn't come in and try and put an orange weapon in there just to see if we caught it. Uh, but we're going to be looking at our escape rope area, the waste bin, all of our compartments, the seat area, and then the rudder pedal area down here as well. Moving over to the first officer side now, it's almost identical here. We're looking at the flashlight again, the circuit breakers. Uh, in their back seat pocket now, we're going to have two life vests as one's for the jump seater 
uh, if there's a jump seater on board that day. And then we're going to be looking at the uh, landing gear and the uh, safety pins right back here as well. Again, we're checking for that headset and then doing all of their compartments as well, making sure there's no funny business going on. And then looking at the observer seat here, just looking at their O2 panel and the audio panel to make sure that everything is set properly. And then checking their seat belt and shoulder harness that there's no damage to it. And then their compartments, as there's not many back here. And we're going to look now one more time behind us and check that the uh, aircraft registration and certificate of airworthiness is uh, readable still. We're going to make sure that our, we have both quick reference handbooks on board and the uh, quick reference card here. And then uh, our procedures checklist and our supplemental procedures card. And then our jump seat briefing card. If all of those are on board, then we've successfully completed our flight deck inspection. And we can move on to the next step now. So the next step now is to complete our safety and power on, and this will be done by the pilot who gets to the aircraft first, and when there's no electrical power established on the plane. Now since it's a cold and dark aircraft today, we're going to have to complete this. And uh, there's a checklist that we use for this, and it's just a read and do method, which means that you read the checklist and then do the line item. So the first one is going to be our maintenance status, and we're going to go ahead and look at our maintenance logbook here in the plane and just quickly review it to make sure all of its checks have been done and that there's uh, no open write-ups that need to be closed by maintenance here. We're going to look up here now at our GPU button and we're going to make sure that that is pushed out and then we're going to look move over to the APU generator that's pushed in. Battery 1, battery 2 will be off with the fuel DC pump and AC pumps 1 and 2 set to auto. Our emergency light will be turned off here with our windshield wipers to off. Hydraulic system 1, 2, and 3B electric pumps will be to auto. Hydraulic system 3, electric pump A will be off. Our landing gear lever will be down. Power plant start stop 1 and 2 will be set to stop. Speed brake lever will be closed. Our thrust levers will be idle. Our slat flap lever, we want to make sure that it agrees with the uh, surface position on the outside of the plane, so it should be down. Battery 1, battery 2 now go on to on and auto here to start its power up, and we're looking now for displays 2 and 3 to become available here, and that there are no ICAST messages enunciated within the uh, first 5 seconds. Now after those first 5 seconds, we're going to confirm now that battery 1 and battery 2 are at least 22 volts minimum here on the MFD page right on display 2. And now we're going to go ahead and check our fire extinguisher panel by holding down the test button, test button and letting it ding at us for a little bit. If all that's good now, we're going to go ahead and complete our electrical power and air conditioning by pushing in the uh, GPU button if it's connected or we might have to start the APU. Now, since the GPU is connected, we're just gonna go ahead and push the GPU and hold off on the APU so we don't have to waste extra fuel. And that completes our safety and power on checklist. Now, generally, after the safety and power on checklist is accomplished, the first officer is gonna head downstairs to complete the exterior pre-flight inspection. Uh, now that the aircraft is fully powered up, they can make sure that everything's properly working out there. While they're out there now, they're looking to make sure that the plane is not damaged in any way, uh, checking for any icing uh, that could be on the plane, maybe from the night before if it was cold out. All of our vents, flight controls, and tubes are unobstructed, and that the panel doors now are properly secured. And a little caveat here is if it's the first flight of the day for the plane, we're going to want to open up all of those uh, panel doors that we can reach just to inspect them and make sure that there is nothing in there. Like I said in the beginning of this video that the uh, TSA may have put in there uh, for our first officer to catch in their walk around. Okay, with the end of the exterior pre-flight, that's gonna go ahead and conclude episode one today. Hope you learned something and enjoyed what goes on to arriving to a uh, cold and dark aircraft and the process it takes to get it up and running. As you saw, we didn't just have to power it on and push some buttons. We had to do some other stuff to make sure that nothing was on the plane that it shouldn't be and all of our paperwork was in order. 
On next week's episode, though, we're going to go ahead and continue with the originating receiving flow and the checklist and then uh, program the MCDU as well. I do hope you have a good rest of your week now. I enjoyed the video and uh, can't wait to see you back next week for episode two.